I am going to share. I know, I know, but it's cool. Just hang in there. All right, I'm gonna share my screen with you. And we're gonna do what we do. All right, so as usual, our introductory slide in the event that we have somebody on in the class today who hadn't enrolled in the class, the enrollment code is there. Please write it down and so that you can um, enroll in the class and you know have access to the assignments and things. All righty. So the lesson representing data. And again, when we talked about this class um, in the introduction, I told you that we will be studying three um, graphic representations, dot plots, histograms, and box plots. Now, it won't be so much of dot plots but we will it will be heavy histogram and box plots okay so those are the two um graphic representations that we are going to be studying and again all of our lessons have to be aligned with what is required by the state of pennsylvania so that's what that standard is and it just says in essence that you should be able to look at some data quantitative and be able to interpret what you see. Okay, using whatever unit of measure and then formula, graph, or data display. Okay, so that's what they're saying. So for today, we're going to do the, a short community meeting. Then we're going to review the characteristics of dot plots and histograms. And we are going to actually concentrate on box plots because, again, for my other class, I see that some people are a little rusty. So we're going back over um, box plots. And then in the practice, you are going to use the same set of data, but create both a histogram and a box plot. We'll discuss a dot plot, but you'll see when we get there. I'll explain a little more. And then your assignment by next Friday. Cool down two will be due, but again, I am just introducing it today. We will talk a little more next week so that you will have what you need by to have the cool down done by Friday. Okay, so let's do it. Community meeting. What is your fondest memory of elementary school? Think about your beginning. What is one good thing that you remember about elementary school? Let me see if I got me some chairs. Nobody liked elementary school. I liked my second grade teacher. My second grade teacher was Rhonda Handelman. She was just so nice. And then she um, got married and left. <laughs> so we didn't have her the whole year, but for the bulk of the year, um, we had her. And it was just, she was just, it was just nice in place. Oh, okay. Learning how to jump double dutch. Yes, yes. Okay. Anybody else? What is your fondest memory of elementary school? Think back to the beginning. Let's, we can even go, depending on where you went to school, we could go kindergarten to eighth grade. Because some people went to, you know, elementary schools that were the whole game at K to eight. Some of you went K to six. So again, well, tell me some goodness that happened in elementary school. Yeah, I know I got this. The, uh, sixth grade is still considered uh, elementary, right? 
Who? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Elementary can be technically K to eight. Oh, right. So I think when I got the sixth grade, yeah, Mr. Foreman, that's who it was. Um, he took me, uh, what was it? Oh, the, the right, like, to be creating more about my uh, writing. And all oh, okay, okay. So, okay, so he, he acknowledged your creative writing. Yeah, that's how I, oh, that's my, that's how I wrote my first book. It, uh, it's just great. Oh, nice. Okay, cool, cool. See, shout out to those educators. We are underappreciated. Yes. That's nice. And that was sixth grade? Yeah, sixth grade. Okay. Nice, nice. Shout out to him. Go, colleague. Anybody else? What one of give me one of your fondest memories of elementary school? Were you the principal's pet? Were you the counseling assistant? Were you the room messenger? <laughs> All of those cool little things that you you like. Were you a a, a safety? I don't know. Do they have girl guys anymore in the hallway? Oh, that shows how old I am. You said who? <laughs> oh, okay, class clown. All right, we got a class clown. The good jokester. I said, do, you, do they have girl guides? Oh, oh, okay. Leader for the week. Yes, yes. Yep. Yeah, and that made everybody else bow down. I'm running this. But it was so cool because in that in that leader, you felt proud all week. Like, yes, you probably went to school every day. Like, yep, I'm there. I'm there. Yeah, school in the week for me. Every week. Okay, cool beans, babe. Cool beans. Yep, that's cool. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yep, and all of these are um are pro you know that helps build your self esteem, you know. And that's why I asked you about elementary school because you know all of those little building blocks created wonderful you. You know what I mean? You all are here because you value that education. You know what I mean? It might have been a little bumpy, but you here. And some of that sub subconsciously was probably formed in elementary school. You know, some people I have a I have been out of high school for a good while, 38 years. And um, my classmates and I got together on Zoom back in September. We had, a, um, <clears throat> you know, impromptu um, class gathering. And one of my one of my classmates said that high school was some of the was like the best four year run of of his life. And we in our fifties, we in our mid fifties, kissing sixty. I was like, wow, you know what I mean? And again, some of that made him who he is today. Just like you all, as the high school students you are right now, some of that goodness that happened in that K to eight got you here. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So, all right. Anybody else? Okay. So we're going to just move this little program on then, darlings. All right. So let's start the review. And again, if you feel you need to take notes from this, please do. If I change the slide and you still there summarizing, let me know. Okay, I, of course I will check before I move. So a dot plot is used on small, small data sets and you can see why just from the construction of it alone. Okay, um, it shows the individual terms in the set. Each dot represents a term. And the height of each bar represents the frequency of that value or category. Or of course, how often it happened. So if we were given this dot plot 
we can have conversation about it, like specific conversation. Okay. We can say the majority of the people in the class have at least two siblings. We can say only children and people who have um, three siblings are equal. We can say we have two only children. You know what I mean? The dot plot is specific. We know exactly what it is. Okay, so if we had to go back and create the data set, we know it would be two zeros, three ones, five twos, three threes, and two fours. Okay, we see that. So that's the beauty of the dot plot. So if you are ever, if you ever have to graph something and you need to know about the individual terms, a dot plot would be where you would go. But again, the data can't be too big because how long would your line be? How long would your number line be? You know what I mean? So that's why, again, the beauty of the dot plot, small sets of data, and you can see the individual terms. Can we switch? Okay, your silence is consent. Uh, next we have the histogram. Now, in a histogram, one is based on continuous data. And because it's based on continuous data, there are no gaps between the bars. There may be some absences, meaning there is nothing in that group or in that, that bin, so to speak. And you use a frequency table to help you organize your data into bins. And bins are merely equally spaced groups. So if we look at this histogram, one, by its construction, meaning there are no spaces, you see that the end of one bin is the beginning of the next. So therefore, again, that shows the continuous nature of the graph. And remember, when you look at the bins, and we are going to... Um, I am saying this to reemphasize. In the bin, the top number or the top in gets counted in the next set. So remember, in this first, in this first bin from 120 to 140, you are actually counting from 120 to 139. When you get in that second bin, then you start 140 to 159. Here, you count 160 up to just before 180. So up to 179, you start counting 180 here. You start counting 200 in here and you start counting 220 in here. Okay, so again, a histogram, and which makes it different from a bar graph. It looks like a bar graph, but again, the difference is there are no gaps. So when we look at a histogram versus a dot, a dot plot, so in this second bin, you it says, there are 10 students whose height is between 140 centimeters and 159 centimeters. Now, all we know is that there are 10 of them. We don't know how many are at 140, 145, 
152, 170, 159. We don't know. All we know that, all we know is from a histogram is that in that bin, there are 10 things. There are 10 students. We don't know their heights as individuals. Again, makes it different from that dot plot. On the dot plot, we will have, again, because that range is 140 to 159, we will have dots over those things for where those students are represented. But you know, that would be crazy given just these students alone, because 10 and 25, 10 and a little, like, let's say 24, that's already 34. So we would have to, you know, look how long that line would be if it were a dot plot. So here, a histogram is good when you have a lot of data. And what you do is you group it together. But what you must remember about the groups is they have to be the same, the same length that they have to be equidistant, okay? So, we good with the histograms? Anybody need a little more something? Because now we are gonna actually roll right into the lesson about a box plot. Okay. So a box plot is a five number summary of your data. Okay, so again, um, when any data set that we had the graph and we're looking at it from a statistical standpoint, meaning we are looking for, you know, means, modes, medians, we are looking for high maximums, minimums and all that beautiful stuff. So our first order of business is to always put the data set into numerical order, okay? And now from steps two to five, we are finding the five numbers that will be included on the box plot. And some of you may remember the box plot being called a box and whiskers, okay? So, one, we're going to put the data in numerical order. Then, because the data is now in numerical order, we can identify the maximum value and the minimum value, or the maximum term and the minimum term. In the th that's two of the five. In step three, we find the median which is Q2, and Q just means quartile because if you look at just the structure alone, it is in four parts, one, two, three, four. So, you know, just like a dollar, the whole thing is a dollar. This is your first quarter, quartile one. This is your second quarter, quartile two. This is your third quarter, quartile three, this is your fourth quarter, quartile four. So that's where the cues come from. So in the third one, we find the median of the data set. So we find the middle, we split this data in half first. So the median is quartile two. So now you have three terms. You have the minimum, the maximum, and you got the midway. You have split the data in half. So now you are going to find Q1 and that's the median of the lower half of the data. So now you split the data in half, you find in the middle of this end. So this will be quartile one. And then you find the middle of the upper half of the data. And that will be quartile three, and thus the five numbers. So I am going to, okay. So there is the data set that I used in this example. So let's look at, now I'm, I'm gonna give you a minute 
Let's see a couple minutes. I want to see, follow the directions. And this is just a you checking yourself. Follow the directions, follow the steps, excuse me, and see what you come out with. And you're going to see if yours matches mine. And again, don't stress. Let's just see what we can do. And again, the data set is 9725121416131318. All right, we ready to talk about it? Okay. I'm gonna take your again. I'm gonna take your silence as a yes. All right, so bam, here's your results. So first, you put the data in numerical order. So now that it's in numerical order, identify your minimum and maximum values. So again, that's two of the five. Then find the median of the data set. You split it in half. So that's Q2. When we start talking about our structure. So now for step four, you are finding the median of this front half, because again, remember 12 split it. So now you are just finding the median of this first four. And when we remember the rules of medians, 
or finding the rule for finding the median. If the data set is even, we add the middle two terms and divide by two. We find the average of the middle terms. So here we added five and seven, got 12, 12 divided by two. So the median, the median of the lower half of the data, Q, the value for Q1 is six. So if we had to write it in, we would put an arrow right here and we would put a little six up here to show that we understand that the median of this set of data is six. It will fall right in between here. And then for the fifth step, we do the same thing on this back half of the data. And once again, we still have four terms. So we find the average of the middle two, 14 plus 16 is 30. 30 divided by two is 15. And again, if we were in class, I would tell you, draw a little arrow up here and put 15. So now two, six, 12, 15, 18. You have your summary. So again, this is the order, the minimum, then the median of the lower half, the first quartile. Then you have Q2, the second quartile. Here you have 15, the middle of the third, and then lastly, the maximum value. And that's your box and whiskers or your box plot. It's a box and whiskers in middle school. Once you get to our level, it becomes a box plot. Lord sees all. Because we're, again, we're thinking on the next level. But again, concept stays the same, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm gonna leave that there for a minute for you all to check. Check yourselves, okay? And again, I also encourage you, if you are a person who is, um, you know you are a visual learner, color code your stuff, you know? So like here, if you need to understand that the median is there, you know, if you have a, you write and then, I don't know. If that, I'm going to just go straight math. You're writing in pencil. <laughs> okay, so maybe you'll take a pen and you'll circle the median because now that is your visual to show you the data is now in half and I will deal with this portion and this portion. Make sense? Let y'all marinate on here for a minute. the picture in there. Let me paste the picture. Yes. All right. Everybody good on box plots and finding the directions? Because you are now going to do one. So does anybody um, need me to stay here?
Yeah, because I'm a little confused. Like, I'm going to keep okay. it easy. Okay, cool. So let's talk about it, mama. All right, so now, this was the data at the bottom, right? That was the data set that we were going to use. So in the first step, let's put it in numerical order first. Okay, so we got it in numerical order. So in our construction, and you can draw the box and whiskers first. You know this is what it's going to look like, right? So the minimum, we need to know where we start our data. So that's why we need the minimum. And then we need to know how how far our data goes so that's why we need the maximum so in our summary we need our start and our finish so that's why two goes here as the minimum that's where we start and and this is where our data ends and now in steps three through five we figuring out this middle okay so now oy. So first, so then, then in the third step, we find the middle of the whole data set. So that's where we got 12. Remember, there are nine I, um, terms. So we just came in four on the left side, four on the right side. So bam, we found the middle. So now in essence, we are not even, and I'm going to stop presenting for a minute and I'm going to do something. Okay. So now we going to not even entertain Wait a minute, I'm trying to take it out. We are not going to entertain any of this. Okay. So now come on. So for the fourth step, we only looking at these numbers right here. Okay. So we found the middle of the data set and our data started with two and ended with 18. So we found the middle. So that's where our 12 is. And we put it in the middle of the data, right? Because it starts at two and ends at 18. So now we want to know, well, what's the middle of the front half of the data. Now, if we, oh, excuse me. So if we had an odd number, then of course it would be easy. We would come in, if we had five numbers, right? But we only have four. So we have to take these middle two to help us find the middle of these four terms. So for here, all right, let me go back to the slide. I'm gonna stop sharing. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop sharing for a minute. I'm gonna put these numbers back. Paste them back. All right, so now for here, what we did was we took Can you tell I kept the um So the Q2 is the median, which is the middle, right? Yeah. And the Q1 is the median of the lower half, which means- Yes, yes. Yep. Look at the screen. See, I made it black. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Cool beans. Get it, get it, get it. Yes. Okay. Make sense now? A little bit? Something sort of kind of like. 
Yeah, Miss Hicks. I don't know if I told you this when I first started, but Mad really not my subject, so you're gonna be having hearing a lot of questions from me. That's all right. Yeah. Listen, bring them because your question is somebody else's. You just okay. are vocal. Oh yeah, girl, that's listen, that's my job. So listen, <laughs> as all and plus, in all honesty, your questions help me with my next class because now. I understand, oh, okay, somebody else might have the same thing. So you just helped me. So when somebody else in my next class, let's say if they had that same issue, I'm going to do the same thing I did. I'm going to cut that out, pull it out, so you can just see the part we're dealing with. But if you and I had not had this conversation, that would have never crossed my mind. Truth be told. Truth be told. Again, I'm telling you, when I said I learned from y'all, like y'all learned from me, I meant that. I meant that. Every listen, y'all my tester babies for the day. <laughs> okay. Yes, absolutely. And thank you for the question. All right. So now we see where we at with it. That's cool beans. All right. So I'm gonna exit this. And that now see now that is one of the beauties of this whole remote learning thing. I can take something out. I can put something back. You know, I can change up some things. So like I said, I thank you so much for your question. I appreciate you. All right, let me see, bam. All right, so thank you, my love. Thank you, my love. All right, so ladies and gents, oh, we got 12 good minutes. I'm loving y'all. I'm cheating. Oh, <laughs> Shirley, yeah, you funny. Oh, you know, I can't see the jet till later. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's why I love my students. Y'all don't even understand how I love this thing called teaching. All right, booze. So we good on this now. We understand how the, the box plot is a five number summary of the data. So now, again, just like with the histogram, we 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 didn't necessarily we just again we summarized so dot plots individualize histograms group or categorize and box plots summarize so now if you wanted to talk about the data in 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 short term let's say you know the range because you know the minimum and the maximum. So you can say that the data is 16 units apart because you know the range, okay? You can say that the median, the median is closer to Q3 than it is to Q1. So that means if we really, like if we had to be super industrial strength specific, then this median, we will move it a little closer down here to 15. You see what I'm saying? Cause it's 12, right? So we will move it down a little bit because 12 is closer to 15 than it is to six, right? Because we'll, we'll find in our later discussions that that means something, okay? So if we look at it again, like I said, so we can tell that the median is closer to Q3. So that's gonna tell us something. And again, like I said, it is a summary. We have just summarized the data. That's what a box plot does for us. So again, depending on what information you need, what depends on what graph you would use. So we gonna try this ladies and gents. So what I want you all to do, and again, on your honor, using this set of data, I want you to do numbers one and three. I want you to construct a histogram on this data. And I want you to create a box plot of this data. Um, so I have, I 
and send them the same text. Um, I have 10, 11. So can we try to do this? Mm. Well, how about this? We're going to start. This will be our warm up because I don't know. We only have eight minutes. Can we get it done and discussed in eight minutes? Or, um, you know, this is on your plate, and we can do this as the warm up on Tuesday. And I, this is sim, it's a, it's a semi um uh oh a oh it oh it's a semi democracy. You kind of got a little bit of vote. So you want to push this till Tuesday because now we have seven minutes. <laughs> so that's what we'll do. Um, you can write this down somewhere. Understand using this set of data, you are going to do two things. You are going to create a histogram and a box plot, and then we're going to discuss them. Okay. And we and remember, I would like you to in your box plot, just like we did, like I shifted the median here. If you find in um, the the practice problem, if you find that the median of the data set, the Q two, the quartile two mark, if you find it is closer to quartile three. Put it closer to quartile three. If you find it is closer to quartile one, put it closer to quartile one because that is going to be our segue into um, our next uh, discussion, which we're going to have on Tuesday. So that means you can also look at the cool down too, but you don't have to start it quite yet because we haven't quite gotten there. But cool down one, we're going to make that happen. Okay? So I am going to stop sharing. And I am also going to stop. Recording.